What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Super Smash Brothers and Platform Fighter tutorial series, we are going to be going over fast falling. And fast falling is the idea of pressing down on the D-pad or the controller or the keyboard, whatever it is that you are using, to actually have the character fall a little bit faster. And this can only be interrupted by certain other actions, such as jumping, being attacked while you're in the air, or landing. So going into our game here, you can see that I am Sean the Bro, I'm the character in the bottom left here, and if I jump normally, this is what my jump looks like. Now if I jump and press down while I'm in the air, I will do a fast fall. It should be pretty obvious that I am falling, I'm falling two times faster than I normally would, but if I go from a higher height, you'll see if I fast fall, it's pretty quick. And if I don't fast fall, then I stay in the air for quite some time. So one more time, this is a standard jump. And this is a fast fall. Fast falls can be chained with attacks and other actions to also add some variety in the gameplay. So they're more useful than just hitting the ground faster. Alright, before we get started on this episode, I would like to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support in this series as a whole, and for the idea of this episode. You guys gave this one to me, so thank you for the great idea of the fast fall system, and thank you for everything. If you guys want to get caught up in the series before you watch this episode, you can check out everything we've done to this point. You can see how we've created our attacks, our hitboxes, our damage system, lives, and different game modes, all that good stuff. I'll link the playlist right here in the top right corner so you can check out the entire Super Smash Brothers and Platform Fire tutorial series. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, but you do care about the fast fall system, then I'll link you to this episode right here, which is where we first went over some more of our advanced movement stage and advanced jump mechanics, because we are going to be building off of that system today to implement this episode. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. And this is a code and blueprint tutorial today, so we're going to do pretty much everything in the code. We're going to want to go to our SSB template character.h, or essentially our base character.h. I scroll down a little bit to my booleans. I've added a new variable today called is fast falling. So if we're fast falling, this will be true. If we're not fast falling, it will be false. So it's boolean is fast falling, and I've made it a U property. Edit anywhere, blueprint read write with a category of character. So we can find this in the blueprint if needed. We won't need it today, but you could do different things such as visual effects or even a different animation when the character is fast falling if you want. And so you may need to visualize it or edit it in the blueprint. Once you've made this boolean, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more to my floats, and I have two new variables today, and I have a fast fall speed and a default gravity scale. So the first one, float fast fall speed, is the speed of the character while they are fast falling. Notice that every character can be different if we have this variable. It does not have to be one specific speed. We can customize the speed that the character fast falls. It doesn't have to be consistent across all characters. So that's the first variable here. The second one is the default gravity scale. This is important because in this episode, what we're going to do is use our fast fall speed to change our gravity scale. However, when the character lands, or if they perform another jump in the air, or if they are launched and have to exit the fast fall state, we have to reset their gravity scale back to the default value. That way, they can actually return to the standard jump. We don't want them to always be fast falling once they enter that fast fall state. Now there's also two functions I want to make for today's episode. So I want to make one called start fast fall and one called stop fast fall. So start fast fall is pretty self-explanatory. This is when we are going to begin fast falling. And stop fast fall is also self-explanatory. This is when we're going to stop fast falling. It doesn't get much simpler than that. But having these two functions means we can call them from anywhere. Thus, if there's multiple cases where we could start fast falling or multiple cases where we could stop fast falling, there we go. We don't have to repeat our logic and copy and paste it. We can just call this function every time. Now there's one other thing in here that I want to do as well, but this is not making a new function. This is just overriding a function from a parent class. So our SSB template character is a child of the A character class, or just the character class. And the default character has this function called landed. If you've followed any of my other tutorial series, you might have seen me override this before, but we haven't done it in this series yet. 
So landed is called when the character lands after being in the air. So if they fall and hit the ground, then they have landed. It doesn't matter if they jumped before, if they were launched, if they just spawned in the air and dropped. Anytime the character then hits the ground after being off of the ground, they enter the landed state and we call the landed function. This is not a function that we are writing, but again, it is one that we are overriding. So we can take the function from the character class and then implement our own logic within it. To do this, I'm going to override the landed function. And to do that, we need to put virtual and override as keywords around the function definition. So I have virtual void landed, and then parameters of constant f hit result ampersand hit override. And that's how we override this function. So now we can write this function out in our SSP template character.cpp, and we will be able to fill out all the logic that we want when this character lands. With all of that done, we can go into the SSP template character.cpp, and let's go into the constructor, the first function here where we set all of our default values. And let's set all the values, all the variables that we just made. So is fast falling is the first one, and I'm setting that to false. When we spawn the character, they're not fast falling by default, so that's false. Scrolling down a little bit, I set the fast fall speed to 2.0. Now, this is just the multiplier right now, so this is essentially two times as fast as regular falling. But you can make this whatever value you want, play around with it, see what gets you the best results. Underneath of that, I've set the default gravity scale to be the current gravity scale of the character. The character has a character movement component, and we can obtain that by typing get character movement, parentheses. And off of the character movement, we can figure out the current gravity scale of the character. So we can get character movement, get the gravity scale, and set the default gravity scale equal to that value. Now we will always know what the default gravity scale of the character is. If we end up changing the default gravity scale of the character, that's okay because this is set in the constructor. So no matter what the default value is, this default gravity scale variable that we made will always capture that and we'll use that going forward. All right, let's scroll down. And the first thing I wanna to go to is the move right function. There's a small adjustment I wanna make in here that will help our jumping in today's episode go much more smoothly. If we don't include this, it can still technically work but it will make it a lot more complicated to test and make sure that everything is working as intended. So inside of our move right function, we were setting our character state to be the character state that we're moving. So if we're walking left, we're in the moving left state. We're walking right, we're in the moving right state. Or if we weren't moving, we were going to the idle state. These states should not apply while we are jumping. The other action and other logic can, because if we want to jump and then reverse directions in the air, we can do that in this game. And so we should still be able to move while we're in the air, but we don't want to change our state. Our state should be E character state jumping since we set that up. And we're going to use that today to determine when we can fast fall. So it's very important that we don't exit out of that state in the middle of the air. Say if we're in the air and we're moving left, then maybe we can't fast fall. Well, that's going to screw up our logic. So let's make sure that we add an if statement around all three of these character state equal lines inside the move right function. And we're just gonna check and make sure the character state is not equal to jumping currently. If it's not equal to jumping, then we can set the character state to be moving left, moving right, or idle. So again, three if statements for each of the character state sets in the move right function. Now, additionally, we have move right controller, which isn't required, but it's useful for things like dead zones. And so if you're using controllers, this is the function that gets called. In this case, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing that we did in the move right function up above. So simply you can do if character state not equal to E character state, and then the state that you want, which is E underscore jumping. And so I'm just going to surround these three character state sets with this if statement. I'm gonna copy it because it is easier than typing it out three times. And there you go. So move right and move right controller now have this logic and now we won't have our states be messed up due to the move right function. Now let's go into our start jump function. So start jump 
is where we were actually initializing the jump. We're actually mainly using the default or the parents jump function by calling super colon colon jump. So we haven't really done a lot of our own logic for the jump function yet. But one thing we want to absolutely make sure that we're doing is setting the character state to be E underscore jumping. When we call the start jump function and we call super colon colon jump, we want to make sure our state is jumping. This if statement above it and the super colon colon jump should already have been in here. But surprisingly enough, we weren't ever actually setting the character state to be jumping. So that's one thing we want to do today. The other is I want to call stop fast fall in here. So remember, you can cancel out of a fast fall three ways. One is by being launched or just taking damage. Then you have landing on a surface. And lastly, you have jumping. Many characters have multiple jumps. So if you jump multiple times, you want to stop your fast fall. You can, of course, trigger your fast fall again after your second jump if you press down again. But it's not going to happen automatically. So essentially, these two lines and this comment are what I've added to the start jump function. The stop jump function is left alone. You don't have to do anything with that today. Then I go ahead and I override the landed function. So remember, we set this up in the header file. We're going to actually write it out here now. Notice that I don't have to put virtual or override when I'm in the CPP file. So I can just do void ASSB template character colon colon landed and then I need to pass in the same parameters which is constant f hit result ampersand hit now in here all I'm doing is setting the character state to be e character state idle it's not a bad idea to call super landed and pass in hit as well it's not required that you do this but if you do do that then you'll do everything that the character does for the standard land but We'll also add our own logic in here for setting the character state back to idle. We've landed, we're resetting the character state to the initial value. Once this is done, we can go down to our start crouch function. So once the player presses down, the start crouch function gets called. Now, before, if we were in the air, nothing would happen. Not that it would ruin anything, just literally nothing would happen. So we had this if statement to determine if we could move, if we weren't stunned and we weren't dead. I've added an additional state now just to make sure that we're not in the jumping state. If we are in the jumping state, we want to do different logic. We don't want to start crouching and we don't want to see if we're on a platform to fall through. If we're in the jumping state, we're going to skip that logic. And so we don't want to do it if we're in the jumping state. So add that check into this if statement. Then we're going to add an else if to this if statement, which didn't exist prior. So this is all new. We still have to be able to move to start fast falling. If we can't move, we don't want to do that. But if we can move and our character state is jumping, then we can start our fast fall. For now, you don't have to touch stop crouch. You can technically add the and character state not equal to E jumping. However, we're not doing anything in here that would screw anything up during the jump. So it's not required that you do that. If you want to, just to keep them even, feel free to do that but it's not required at the current time. Now scrolling down, I made both my functions, my start fast fall and my stop fast fall. So for my start fast fall, what I do is I set my is fast falling variable to true. And then I set my current gravity scale to itself times the fast fall speed that we have on this character. So get character movement gravity scale times equals asterisk equals fast fall speed. My fast fall speed was set to two in the constructor. And so we will know that we take our current gravity scale and multiply it by two. And that's how fast our fast fall will be. Now stop fast fall speed is just going to be resetting the variables that we set during the start fast fall speed. So in this function, we're going to set is fast falling to be false. And we're going to set our gravity scale back to default gravity scale. We're not going to multiply it. We're not going to add to it. Nothing like that. We're just going to do a hard equals back to our default gravity scale. Set it back to the default value that it was. Now, lastly, we want to go to our take damage function and we want to make sure if we are launched or if we just take damage that we stop fast falling. In Smash Bros, I believe if you take damage that does not launch you, you don't go out of your fast fall. You can keep fast falling. 
And so you can go ahead and put stop fast fall in your handle launch function if you would prefer. As right here, just call stop fast fall like right here. I like the idea of stopping fast fall anytime damage is taken, so I'm going to put it right here. But that is possible to change in the future if we do something like passive damage over time and we decide that we don't want to actually stop fast fall when that happens. All right. With all that said, we can go into the engine, and at this point, we don't really have to change anything in any of the blueprints, but one thing that we might want to look at is the default gravity scale of our character. So if we go to either our base character BP or a specific character, doesn't matter. You go to the base character BP if you want to change the gravity scale for all characters, and you go to a specific character if you just want to change the gravity for one character. So starting in the base character BP, I can click on my character movement component. It's right here. Then I see my gravity scale. By default, the gravity scale is 2.0. So if I change this value, it will change it for all characters. But say this is the general gravity scale and the mannequin BP is a heavier character. Then I may want to go into the graph, go to the character movement component and change the gravity scale just here. So I could set the gravity scale to be 4.0, which is double this one. Those are possibilities. And this is where we're setting that default gravity scale from in the constructor. And this is also what we're using in our start fast fall and stop fast fall. We're setting that variable right there. So play around with it as you see fit. But otherwise, you don't have to touch them. Just modify the fast fall speed, and you will get the result that you're looking for. Now, if we come into the game, and I select my character, I'm only going to do one this time. Then I come in here, and you'll see I can execute a fast fall. Now, the other characters won't be able to perform fast falls. To do this logic, we will have to take a look at their states. So let's grab one of the mannequins in here. Since these are all controlled by their keyboard, their logic is a little bit different than player ones. So you see I've grabbed the yellow text mannequin here. I'm going to search for character state. You can see that they're idle right now. And when I jump, they don't go to jump. In fact, when I move, they don't go to anything other than idle. We will get this fixed up for the next episode when we go over advanced character states. And so you will be able to control all of your characters using the same buttons without doing any extra logic every time we implement a new feature. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. And it helps me out a ton. If you want to give me any extra support, please check out the Patreon page that I have and the YouTube membership page that I have. It would be really useful for me to continue the series with all your ideas that you pass along to me. Thank you to everyone that is already a member. Very, very appreciative of that. Very grateful for you guys and very excited to see what we can create in the future with your help. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I would be happy to help you out and get you situated with any of those problems so you can keep working on your game. But like I said, guys, that is all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.